Hey, I'm Eric Kennedy, and I'm a freelance UX and UI designer, and I also teach an online course on design at learnui.design. Today, we're going to be redesigning a submission from one of my students, Thomas Lant. This is his web app, Time Zones, which is for calculating time zones around the world so you can easily schedule meetings with your remote colleagues. Now, I'm going to redesign this app in Sketch, and while I do, I'm going to narrate a lot of the things that I think about when I'm working on a project like this. And these are just like tips and tactics that you can use for your own design work. We're going to focus mainly on the visual design, but we'll also talk about some UX stuff. Visually, our goal is just to keep things really clean, simple, and modern looking. Okay, let's get started. So one thing I'll do when looking at a new design is a squint test, which is what it sounds like. You just squint your eyes and see which parts of the design pop out the most. Sometimes I'll do this in sketch by dragging a big white rectangle over everything and then giving it a background blur of a few pixels. Right now I'm noticing that the title and these daylight savings times alerts are the most prominent elements on the page. And that's kind of a bad sign because I didn't come here to learn about daylight savings time. I came here to compare the different times across cities. So let's make those two things way more prominent. I'm going to remove these time zone names since they're not really adding any extra value. If we just assume the browser can tell that I'm near Seattle, then that could be auto added and I can just remove this entire row. Likewise, 99% of the time I'm scheduling a meeting, I'm not really going to be interfering with the daylight savings time. And even if I schedule a meeting for 31 days out, I can just have these times adjust automatically. I don't actually need to alert the user that the relative time between cities is changing. The date picker is important, so I'll keep that. But these local times relative to UMT seem more like interesting trivia than something that's going to help me schedule a meeting. I'll probably make these dates bigger, but they're not as important as the times, so they will definitely be kept smaller. Now I have this button to add a city. One thing I like to keep in mind is that whenever users are adding an item to a short list, they'll glance at the bottom of the list really briefly to see if there's a new button right there. I'll make this 50% opacity until it's hovered on just so people can tell that it's not the same thing as one of these cities. I call this the law of locality. Whenever it's possible, put a control where it affects change in your interface. Now I've also added this plus button to make it doubly clear that this is for adding a new city, but that gives me this weird misalignment where I have capital letter, capital letter, capital letter, and then it kind of jumps to the right here for this A, and that feels subtly wrong. What I'm gonna do is put the plus button into the margin. This is called hanging punctuation, and I have a blog post linked below that explains it in more detail. But you'll sometimes see it with icons. Here's the before and here's the after, where they're floating in the margin. Or bullet points, here's the before and here's the after. It's a nice way to keep text aligned. You don't have to do this, but it does get you a little bit more alignment and neat, clean feeling. But now my left margin is awkwardly small to have this plus button floating here, so I need to consider the layout of the entire app. Right now, everything is left aligned, but my default strategy for an app like this is to consider how much width does the content want, and then start by centering that. This is harder when there's a sidebar or multiple levels of navigation, but this is a pretty simple app, and the major constraint is the cities and the times can probably fit in about eight columns of my normal grid, which has 60 pixel columns and 20 pixel gutters. Now, right now, the dates are still in the side margins, and we'll come back and talk about those later, but first, let's talk a little bit about fonts. The logo is in Lucida Grande, the cities are listed in Arial, and the times are in Monospace Courier. I want to get everything to the same font, just to keep the design looking simple and the page load times quick. The only hard requirement on the fonts is that numbers all be the same width. This is called tabular figures, and it means that these times will be all nicely right aligned with one another. Oftentimes, I'll just type some zeros and ones to check if a font has tabular figures. So Arial's out. When choosing fonts, I'll often use my good fonts table, which is a resource of free and cheap fonts in my online course, Learn UI Design. Here I can see that IBM Plex Sans is a sans serif with a bunch of weights. It includes italics. It makes an interesting title and a legible body font, and it passes the tabular figure test. So that sounds perfect. In another blog post linked below, I give six reasons you can use to justify a particular font choice, and Plex Sans meets reasons one, two, four, and six. So it's a great choice. With the new font here, things are starting to take shape. But let's do a little more cleanup before we get ahead of ourselves. We can still use the app font for the logo, but let's remove the border, make it a more legible and consistent color, and give it a reasonable size. 20 points looks fine. For this intro text, hopefully it's obvious how to add a city, as well as update the times. By the way, typing into a text box is one way of entering a time, but a slider might be a quicker way to adjust times. I also think this little paragraph right here can be condensed into a contact link that just emails Thomas directly. Frankly, I think we can do the same thing with share here uh, and GitHub and blog. I don't know why we need to include the Trello at all. So let's just do that. 
All right, so I wanna go back to the slider idea. I think each city having a 24 hour slider could be a quick way to compare times across different cities. Cause when you slide one, all the others would just update in real time. And plus I think it invites experimentation more than typing in a text box does. So let's add them. I always round off the corners of my track and I'm gonna give it a lighter gray. I just use 10% opacity of black to find a light shade of gray really quick. For the button, we'll start with a white circle, but we'll have to get the shadow just right if we're not gonna add an outline to the button itself. The shadow with a positive Y value is gonna appear below the button, and that's directional. It's from the light that comes from the sky. The shadow that is centered on zero X and zero Y, that's probably more from ambient light, and it's a little bit lighter and has a little bit more blur, but it ensures that we're able to see that top of the button against the white background. I'm gonna space the labels evenly and then reduce their opacity to find the shade of gray that I want. 60% feels about right, but whenever I'm evaluating an element that's duplicated for every item in a list, I really need to see all of them before I can decide if it's working. I'm gonna adjust the spacing so that the space between different cities is greater than the space within a single city's controls. Okay, now this is feeling much simpler, but these text boxes still feel kind of clunky. And since the sliders invite experimentation, I don't feel like I need to make it as obvious that these are in text boxes. What we can do is just have the text box control appear on hover, at least on desktop, to show the user that this area is clickable and editable. I use the Sketch plugin Sketch Runner to add pointers from the default Mac OS symbol library, like the text cursor hand. I'll also do this with links and other elements that have hover states, especially if I'm gonna be presenting the design to others. Let's put the dates in a human readable format. We'll have the calendar control have some sort of affordance on hover, and then when you click, you'll be able to pick the date proper. Make sure to keep everything aligned for a neat, clean feel. Now this is looking pretty nice, but one thing I think we could emphasize is that if I'm scheduling a meeting for Monday in Seattle, that's actually Tuesday in Hong Kong. Never mind that it's midnight. I think it's important to show that this is actually going to be a different day. I think this plus one day marker does the trick. It's nothing crazy, but it does draw some attention to the difference. And that wraps things up. We've landed on a design that makes it super simple to compare times across different cities, and it also looks really slick and modern. So let's compare the before and after. If you like this, you can sign up to get updates whenever I release similar content at learnui.design slash newsletter.html. And if you're serious about learning interface design, make sure to check out Learn UI Design at learnui.design. It's my online course about interface design. It covers everything from color to typography, design process, and more. Uh, it's over 20 hours of video, and a lot of it is structured just like this. You're sitting behind my shoulder watching me do some project that illustrates whatever the lesson is in that video. So if that sounds interesting, check it out, learnui.design. All right, that wraps things up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next 10-minute redesign.